Provisionary Employment Contracts. A provisionary uh, employment uh, is based under the Labor Code under Article 296, formerly 281. So under the Labor Code, <clears throat> under this article, a provisionary employment shall uh, not exceed six months. However, remember that there has been a case, a Supreme Court decision, a jurisprudence where it became the issue how to understand six months. And then the Supreme Court said that it should be understood as 180 calendar days because we have another law called the Civil Code wherein states that if a law provides for uh, a month, it should be interpreted as 30 days. Why is this important? Because, uh, for example, if an employee starts on January 1, the if you count by six months, that will end on June 1. However, if you count via 180 calendar days, that will end probably sometime in May 27, 28, or days before June 1. This is critical or important because there have been so many employers who became liable. Uh, because remember, even just one day of work after the probation period, the probationary employee becomes automatically a regular employee without need of any further action, notice, confirmation, or recognition on the part of the employer. It is the labor law that will automatically change the status of the said probationary employee into a regular employee uh, after one day of work past the probationary period. So to go back, probationary employment shall not exceed six months in their period as 180 calendar days. And moving forward, I'll just keep mentioning 180 calendar days so you won't be confused. From the date the employee started working, so it is counted from day one, unless it is covered by an apprenticeship agreement stipulating a longer period. Uh, we'll discuss more on apprenticeship on a different, uh, uh, how to say this, um, uh, chapter or lesson. Just as early as now, remember that not all companies are allowed uh, to conduct apprenticeship. Employers are required first to coordinate and get approval from the TESDA okay, uh, regarding any apprenticeship or learner program. And a company cannot just simply uh, decide to have an apprenticeship program. It has to be first coordinated with TESDA. The services of an employee who has been engaged on a probationary basis may be terminated for a just cause or when he fails to qualify as a regular employee in accordance with reasonable standards made known by the employer to the employee at the time of his engagement. An employee is allowed to work for uh, to work after a probationary period shall be considered as a regular employee. See, that's why it's very critical to stop a probationary employee from continuing work after the probationary period, do not even allow him or her to work, even if he or she volunteers. You cannot and should not do it because that will trigger this particular provision. Now, what are the requirements based on what we have uh, read? Based on what we've read plus the omnibus rules implementing the labor code. Now remember, Laws usually have implementing rules and regulations before they are implemented, yeah, commonly called as the IRR. Uh, in some cases, the DOLE comes out with its own uh, version, like a department order, or sometimes a, a labor advisory or a memorandum and the like. So when the labor code was issued, because the labor code is a very long law, it has various books, I think it's from book one to book six. And then each book has several titles. So each of book has its own uh, implementing rules. In total, the labor code, the implementing rules of the labor code, code is called the omnibus rules. Uh, under the omnibus rules, the uh, it reiterates the six months and then the standards um, required to be made known to the employee. So, 
essentially, there are two requirements to a valid probationary employment contract. The first one is that the, there should be a probationary period not exceeding 180 calendar days. Remember, the words are not exceeding. So technically, it can be shortened. It cannot go beyond the 180 calendar days, but it can go lower than 180 calendar days, meaning the employer can have 150 calendar days or five months. That is a sure ball that, the, that you will not be violating the 180 card calendar day limitation because that is the, the cap, the limitation. Now, if you use five months, that's equivalent to 150 calendar days. That's sure ball that you won't be able to uh, miscalculate the how to say this, uh, the limitation. And then um, remember that it is a management prerogative whether to reduce. Um, there are some companies that only have two months probationary period. That's highly favorable to the employee who can immediately become a regular uh, employee in such a case. But remember, if you're going to adopt a very short probationary period, remember that one just one day after that probationary period, meaning one day after the two months, the status of the employee, if they are allowed or they continue to work beyond the probationary period, will automatically be converted or changed to a regular employee if they continue working even just for one day. So that is a uh, trade-off. You have to be careful if you're going to adopt a shorter probationary period because you have to monitor it carefully. Okay, the second requirement is that the standards or criteria for regular, for regular employment has been made known to the employee on or before the engagement or on or before day one. So the standards or, or criteria, so these are your uh, um, factors in terms of assessing the probationary employee if he or she is suitable to become a regular employee. So this is uh, another uh, aspect where management prerogative comes in because it can vary depending on what will be the what will be prioritized by the employer or what will be valid by the employer for example some employers prioritize attendance work performance teamwork communication outputs uh, and so on and so forth it can be uh, a short list can be a long list i have seen some cases wherein it's a three page list of standard or criteria that is usually for multinational corporations or big companies because they want to evaluate almost every aspect of the employee from skills output behavior and so on and so forth and then they put um, sub uh, standards or criteria the point there being is that um, it is recommended that you come out come out with something very simple only so it will be easier for grading for evaluation because you also have to indicate in the probationary employment contract the passing rate whether it's it's 75 percent 80 percent it depends on you it depends on the employer because again it is an exercise of management prerogative now those are the only two requirements remember that um the results of the evaluation uh should be issued or made known to the employee on or before the last day, on or before the last day. So under the labor code, strictly speaking, the evaluation is only done once, okay? And then the results of the evaluation may be communicated to the professional employee on or before. On means on the last day or before the last day. Of course, as a matter of best practice, it is uh, recommended that you inform the probationary employee at least two weeks, if not at least 30 days before the last day. This is to ensure that, again, you will stop the employee from continuing work uh, even just one day uh, past or after the probation period. Because in your uh, letter uh, regarding the uh, non-passing of the probationary employee, you indicate there that his or her last day will be on this particular date and that he has to surrender uh, the company property and any assets that may have been given to him or her and she has to undergo exit clearance and so on and so forth. So that's a clear indication that the employee has been ordered or instructed to stop 
working and then uh, I had to say this, she has to process her exit. So that is uh, the recommended procedure. Now, when it comes to uh, how many times the evaluation will be made, there are companies wherein their evaluation is um, th three times. Usually, the first evaluation is on the second month. The second evaluation will be on the uh, around fourth month, and the final evaluation will be on the fifth month. Okay. Again, this is an example of management prerogative because it's up to them if they want to. Now, remember that if the company decides to adopt such a three-step evaluation process, then the employer is bound to observe it. So if the employer does not comply with it, uh, it can be a basis or a ground for a probationary employee later on to challenge or to question why uh, he did not or she did not pass and become a regular employee because the employer did not comply with its own rules and procedure. Remember, we discussed before under management prerogative when the employer uh, comes out with its own company policies, the employer itself is bound to comply with its own rules and regulations. And it can actually backfire if the company does not follow its own policies. So do remember that. So what are the effects of non-compliance or non-observance with the requirements for a valid provisional employee or a provisional employment contract? If there is a violation, the employee is deemed a regular employee from day one, okay? In these situations, number one, the probation exceeds 180 calendar days. That's why it's very critical, again, that you should stop a probationary employee from uh, continuing uh, his or her work after the probationary period. Number two, the employee, uh, oh, sorry, first one, the probation exceeds for the calendar days, so the limit is only for the calendar day, days, don't go beyond it. Number two, that's what we referred earlier, the, the employee continue working beyond the probation, whether instructed or allowed to do so. Now, before I continue with the last one, number three, Let's stop here for a while regarding continuing probation in relation to extension, probationary extension. Do not extend probation. Okay, I will be very clear. Do not extend probation. I am aware, I understand that there is the Supreme Court decision, the only and only one Supreme Court decision uh, wherein uh, it allowed the employer to extend the probationary period. That is just one Supreme Court decision versus thousands by the thousands of Supreme Court decisions wherein the Supreme Court kept saying repeatedly over and over again that uh, the limit is 180 calendar days. You cannot go beyond it. You cannot extend it. You cannot renew it. You cannot do whatsoever with it because um, that will violate the uh, security of tenure of the probationary employee. And then um, the employer is basically circumventing the law against regularization by extending and ex repeatedly uh, re re restarting the probation. Okay, that's not allowed. That, that runs counter to labor law. And again, I am in agreement with that because in practice, even if there's that, there's that Supreme Court decision again, a lot of labor arbiters, a lot of justices do not uh, subscribe to that point of view. Rather, they, they, they agree with the, again, thousands and thousands of, of labor law cases that have uh, maybe not thousands, hundreds, uh, but there's so many labor law cases almost every month. So there are thousands of, of labor law cases wherein um, the limit is the limit. You cannot go beyond it. You cannot, uh, I would say, this extend, renew, and whatever other uh, has this creative ways you want to extend the probation, you cannot simply extend it. Okay, so I hope that is very clear right now. Do not extend, do not renew, do not do, not do anything that could, that could uh, lengthen the probation uh, beyond the 180-day calendar day limitation. And finally, the last one, 
the employee was not informed of the standards criteria for regular employment on or before the engagement or day one. Remember that it's always best to have in your provisional employment contract the standards or criteria for uh, evaluating the employee because it is a matter of fairness. Have to be fair with the uh, employee. He or she should know how or what uh, he is being or she is being evaluated on. Like for example, the employee should know if he or she is being evaluated primarily on the attendance, let's say attendance 30%, then he or she will probably be more punctual uh, going to work and lessening absences. Or that, uh, for example, if the employee is being evaluated big chunk, 40% for communication, then probably the employee would be more discerning on how to message or communicate uh, with his or her teammates or immediate supervisor or superior. So it's a matter of fairness. The employee would should have would have to know which aspects he or she has to focus on depending on the uh, points assigned by the uh, um, I would say this uh, employer. Like for example, there are some companies who prioritize uh, how to say this um, dress code. Okay, so um, if the employee is made aware of it, that you are being assessed 20% of your evaluation is on uh, how to say this, uh, looking good, uh, proper grooming, then the employee would be uh, more inclined to report for work, uh, how to say this, in a, uh, uh, how to say this, uh, a proper, properly groomed. So there. So remember that there are so many provisional employment contracts that skip on this. They just provide for the probationary period and then does not, it does not have provisions, sentences, clauses, paragraphs on the standards or criteria and then the passing rate. And when the, um, how do I say this, the results of the evaluation will be communicated or delivered to the employee. So uh, do take care of that. Okay, one thing unique with probationary employees is that is their security of tenure. There are so many out there, both the employer and employee, who are under the incorrect and mistaken assumption that you can easily terminate or dismiss a probationary employee. That is not correct. Uh, not because, uh, just because they are probationary employees does, does not mean that they don't have security of tenure. Wrong, incorrect. Probationary employees have security of tenure, okay? Uh, under the omnibus rules, Implementing the Labor Code under Book 6, Title 1, Section 6, Letter C, it states that the services of an employee, meaning the probationary employee under Section 6, who has been engaged in probationary status may be terminated only for a just cause or when authorized by existing laws. So similar to regular employees and other employees actually, uh, for that matter, may only be dismissed before, uh, for, for regular employees, they may only be dismissed for just or authorized causes for non-regular employees before the expiration of their of the duration of the employment contract, they may only be dismissed or terminated for just or authorized causes. Now, for probationary employees, in addition to what we discussed, uh, there's something unique, uh, how to say this, uh, to them. Um, they may also be dismissed when they fail to qualify as a regular employee in accordance with the reasonable standards that we discussed earlier prescribed by the employer. So the employ the probationary employee, to be very clear, during his probation period, let's say the probation period period is 180 calendar days. During that period, before the last day, let's say on the middle, like on the second month, 60 calendar days, the, the probationary employee cannot just be simply dismissed because the employer, the manager, or the director does not anymore want him or her to be working in the company. No, the probationary employee still has security of tenure. If you want to dismiss that particular probationary employee in, uh, in just barely two months of work or 60 calendar days of work, there has to be a just cause. What are the just causes? We'll discuss this more later on, but for now, uh, some examples are serious misconduct, willful disobedience, fraud, uh, how to say this, um, commission of a crime, and so on and so forth. 
uh, and or there is an authorized cause. Uh, again, also we'll discuss this more later on, but for our example right now, it can refer to, um, how to say this, uh, redundancy, retrenchment, disease, closing for business, installation of labor saving devices, and so on and so forth. So again, in that situation, even if he or she is just a probationary employee, before the expiration of his probationary period, there should be a just cause or, author or authorized cause in order for him or her to be dismissed or separated from employment. Without just cause or authorized cause, there will be illegal dismissal. Now, uh, on the last day of his uh, probation, the employee, may, the probationary employee, may also be dismissed from work if he or she fails to qualify for regular employment. So that is now necessary for the employer to notify in writing the employee regarding his or her uh, non-qualification or non-passing for regular employment. So do remember, a probationary employee has security of tenure. They cannot be easily dismissed during their probationary period, but on the last day of their probationary period, they may dismiss, they may be dismissed if they fail to qualify for regular employment. <clears throat> 